<laughs> okay, good morning, everybody. Let's see. This is uh, Wednesday. Um, oh, my goodness. What is this? Wednesday, July, July 15th. It's tax day, right? 2020. Okay. All right. That's kind of just for the video purpose. Okay. Bring your hands up. Take a nice deep breath in. Yeah, just slowly let everything stretch out and take your time. Yeah, remember to be comfortable. Take breaks as you need to take breaks. Yeah. Don't be afraid to go at your own pace. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry about that. We're recording. Yeah, okay. So remember to take breaks as you need to take breaks. Um, take a drink as you need to take a drink. And don't be afraid to get your own peace. Yeah, and be safe, be comfortable. Yeah, just imagine your palms going through your body. Extend your legs away from you. Flow the chi into the ground and then pull the chi up from the earth. Flowing through your legs, through your spine, your neck, over the top of your head, down the front of your body. Again, breathing in. Use your imagination, use your mind, use your intent and out. Flow the chi in your bones. Feel and see the chi moving into your bones, stimulating the bone marrow. Imagine the bones alive, full of blood, full of energy, creating new blood cells, creating new bone cells, getting stronger, denser. It's still growing. <laughs> Come up from the side, eyes looking right over the fingertips. Imagine staring far away at the horizon, scanning the horizon, or staring far away at a mountain top. Breathing in and out. The whole time, keeping a nice straight posture, your spine lightly expanded up. Your legs lightly falling into the earth, no resistance. Breathing in and out. Use your shoulder blades. Let your move from the tantin, move from the waist. Feel just your lower belly expanding and relaxing. Scooping the chi and filling up every muscle tissue in your body. Deep breath. Exhale. Squeeze and twist and let go. Fill up all the bones. Charge up the bones with chi, with blood, with air. Charge up the ligaments and tendons. Bring everything back, let everything go. Remember to expand, but relax. Let go of every bit of tension in your body. Feel the blood flowing down to your fingers. Drop your hands at the side. Drop your arms. Lightly close your eyes. Flow the chi down to your lower tantin, about three inches below your belly button, right in the center. Move your joints around. Move your joints to relieve any tension you might be holding and don't realize. Make sure the head is pulled back a little bit to align the top of the head with the spine. Tip of the tongue, on the roof of the mouth, just behind the upper teeth. Relax the chest. As you breathe in, the lower belly expands. As you exhale, it collapses. 
No tension. Relax your jaw. Relax your shoulders. If your body feels like it's making small little vibrations and circles, just let that happen. Let it come out. Relax your hip. Let your tailbone tuck forward and under you a little bit, even in the chair. Just let your legs fall to the earth, sinking into the ground. Slowly expand your spine upwards, straightening out your neck, feeling the top of your head being pulled and suspended from above. Not the center of your head, but just back of center, aligned with the spine. Let go of the hips and the pelvic joints and ex slowly expand the feet into the ground, no resistance with the bottom of the feet. You can gently feel the bottom of your feet pressing into the earth, flowing, growing, extending down into the earth. Shoulders are relaxed, arms are hanging right at the side, elbows a little bit bent. Okay, so before we go into the eight brocades, we'll do the first warm up. Slowly open your eyes, turn your palms forward. Take a deep breath, let it all out. As you breathe in, only move your lower belly. Relax your chest and your shoulders and your elbows. Take a second deep breath. Let it all out. And take a third deep breath. And let it all out. Slowly raise your arms as you breathe in. So we'll just start with the, the basic warm up and then we'll move into the eight brocades of silk. And exhale. Tilt your sternum up and down, exhaling. Extend your feet into the ground. Drop your head, let everything go. Finish your breath and then begin again. Drop your shoulder blades and extend your arms a little bit. And exhale, tilt the sternum up and down, not too far. As you drop the head, be sure to keep your spine straight. Avoid hunching. Just tilt your sternum up. Finish your breath and begin again when you're ready, lightly extending your fingertips. One more time. And down. Okay, and relax. Okay, so I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask Bond to remain seated. So if you want to do the seated and then I'm going to stand so you can see the standing. Okay, so this is called eight brocades of silk. Um, the method I learned came from a teacher from Taiwan who was visiting at the time. And our group, our Kung Fu club was able to invite him to our classes and we let him teach. He taught classes for, for several weeks, taught a lot. And I wish I remembered more of it. Okay. All right. So let's start with the feet together. We always want to start with feet together and then sink and gather first and coordinate your movement, leading with the mind, expanding, 
If you're standing, the heel can lift a little bit, and sink straight down. Flowing the chi down, checking your alignment, letting all the blockage, all the tension go. Breathing in and out. Imagine the palms going right through the body, directing the chi down into the earth. Earth chi flows up around you. Drop the fingertips a little to direct the chi through the center. And stand. Shift to one side and slowly open. Take your time. Make sure everything's relaxed and drop. Okay, so first one has two parts. I'll just show you first. Okay, so the first part picks up the chi just to about the mouth and directs it down. And you sink, and then the second part, you pull the chi up through the center, press the palms up, just look up a little bit, and then turn the palms and come back down and stand. Okay. So as always, you can overlay, you, you can rise a little bit more and sink a little bit more. And if you're comfortable, you can add the turn of the waist so you have that spiral energy. And if you're doing the Tantin breathing, you can always overlay that over. Okay, but again, take your time. Um, go at your own pace. You can do standing or seated. Okay, so let's see, we'll do about six. Okay, so number one, breathing in. Just relax the shoulder blades and exhale. And inhale. And exhale, drop the shoulder blades, look straight ahead. And stand, and then begin again, breathing in and out, and in, pressing and out. And again, in and out. And in, feel yourself pulling the chi up and pressing and out. And you finish, stand, and then begin again. Shoulders down, relaxed. Directing the chi down. Use your shoulder blades, palms are light. One more time. And down. And draw. And out. Just relax at the bottom and a slight pause. Okay, so number two, I'll show you first. Number two, if you're going to lift both arms and your left hand goes on top. But as always, don't worry about the left and right. This is my left hand. They separate. One hand pressing up, one hand pressing down. And you want to use your shoulder blades just like the other in the other warm-ups and then I'm going to turn and watch my palm fall so my neck rotates I'm going to come back to center and then I'm going to repeat in switching hands so the other hand comes up and presses and turn and roll your neck all the way down okay? and then we come up to the beginning okay so um, the form starts with your left hand on top, about solar plex, right at solar plex, and just be about um, below your belly button and waist over here. Yeah? But don't worry, don't worry, left or right, because we do both sides. Okay, take a deep breath first. And exhale, and then begin. So two hands, breathing in, folding, left hand on top. 
pressing, coming to the side, turning the head, rolling the head down, stretching the neck, coming back to center, breathing in, right hand on top, relax, breathing in, and out. Elbows always a little folded. Again in, left hand and out. Take your time, let everything settle. Finish the move, breathing in and out. Breathing in and out and in and out. So just to remind you, part of our safety protocols, because a large number of our viewers are going to be seniors, we said we don't encourage you looking up more than 45 degrees. And you have to know your body and what you can do. But as we get older, you don't want to be looking up more than 45 degrees. So looking up at the corner with a wall meets the ceiling is generally about 45 degrees. Let's do one more time, breathing in and out and in and out and in and out and in and out and relax when you finish and look straight. So number three starts off very similar. You're going to pick up two palms, but then you turn both palms down. And as you're dropping, you look, look to one side. I'm going to look to my left first. And before my palms finish falling, I come back to center. Then I do the right side, breathing in and out, exhaling, and then I come back to center. Okay. Um, I do it a lot slower. The teacher who taught us, he actually did it pretty fast. Very, very loose and very easy. But I like to do it a little slower. I'm there. Okay? All right. So palms facing forward. Take a deep breath first. Breath to begin. Exhale. Okay? And begin breathing in. Both palms drop and turning to the side as you exhale and back to the center. Finishing the breath. Breathing in and out, and coming back to center as you finish the exhale. Again, in and out, and in and out, and in and out, and in. And and out. One more time, in and out and in and out and last time, in and out and in and out and relax. Okay, so in general, if you just want, um, if you don't have much time and you want to do all the movements, you can do three left, three right, or six all together. But really, I encourage you just do as many as you feel is comfortable. Sometimes it takes nine, 10, 12 movements to really relax if you have tension. Okay, next movement is um, um, just watch me first because it is a little tricky. If you're in the chair, it's not too bad, but if you're standing. So the next movement, we're gonna hyper, hyper extend our back. So we're gonna lean. And as we lean, we just, we just look straight up. You don't have to stretch your head, but you can just look straight up. And you're gonna, from here, you're gonna open your hands. Okay? And arms are down, elbows are down from the back, right? It's my shoulder blades are squeezing together. So from the back, it looks like this. So 
So the trick is, you know, don't go too far back, start off with a small movement, a safe movement. But the important part is to pick yourself back up. If you don't, if I don't use my hands, then this is all back muscle. Okay? That's not good. So to pick yourself up, you bring your arms up and then you come forward. Okay. So if you watch that again, right? I'm going to stretch and then my arms are going to pick up and then I stand up straight and your arms are going to act as a ballast. So it's going to help to, to bring you forward. Um, again, start with a small movement. It's a wider stance. Relax the knees, relax all the joints. Start with a smaller stance. Don't overstretch. I don't want anybody falling down <laughs> in a safe place. Do what's comfortable for you, what's safe for you, so in the chair or standing. Okay, so um, let me let me do one or two first. Right? Just kind of watch. You can go through the movements, but don't don't bend back. Right. And then my hands would come to the center, and then I'll go again, breathing in and come up. Okay, so from the side. On the side, my knees are bent, dropping my arms, and then bringing my arms up in front of me. Yeah, okay. That's really the important part, the safety part, bringing the arms up, and that will bring your body back forward. Okay, pay attention to your joints. Remember, do what's comfortable. All right, so a little wider stance, knees bent, uh, one breath to begin. Breathing in and out, and then we'll begin. So breathing in, open, and up. So as you get comfortable with the move, and you can expand and stretch a little bit more, you can see how you're starting to expand the chest area opening up the sternum and the rib cage. Just drop and bend the elbow. Pick up the arms. Palms over each other, back to the tantin, and then open. So only go back as far as it's comfortable for you. Right? You know your body, work into the movement, work into the range of motion, taking your time. Always safer to start off with a smaller range of motion and warming up. Right? There's a lot of time to, to build up and And relax. Okay, and stand. Okay. So as we work our way down, uh, next movement is a is a punching movement. So the hands come up to the side. Right. If I'm from the side here, hands just drop to the side, lightly rubbing against the body, and it's going to. You just extend right to the center. You can turn a little bit, but don't turn too much, and. You want to be right at the center. Uh, the, the emphasis is on the breath coming out. So use the ha sound, H-A. And that will open your throat. Um, it's a little bit more explosive. You'll feel your stomach ex expand and compress one time. So you want to squat down. Again, only as low as is comfortable for you. Okay. So if you watch me, I'm going to breathe in. And I'm going to exhale, ha, huh. and I'm going to drop my hand across my body, pick up my fist, come to the height of my nose and drop my arm back and then cross my hands while I stand. Okay. So I'll do the second, the second one from the side. I will be breathing in, exhale, ha, huh. it drops down, it swings out and then I stand. Okay. And then I come back. I probably shouldn't go too low. My knees have been hurting me a little bit, probably because I'm going under my the castle bridge. 
<laughs> trying to get in and out past my granddaughter. Okay. Those of you who know, know. <laughs> All right. So again, let's just start off with one breath. And out. Okay. And begin breathing in. And start with my left hand. <sighs> Swing it out, a back fist. And rise, palm over palm, lined up with my tantin. And dropping back to center, and then breathing in. Right hand. <sighs> breathing in and out. Going back to the left punch, breathing in. Right side. <sighs> and one more time, left and right. <sighs> and if, remember, I can't hear you, so do a nice, loud, <sighs> express yourself. It's only you and your cat, dog, husband, wife, <laughs> and relax. <laughs> so, yeah, that's one of the things when you do this punch, express yourself, go, ha, ah, and just let it all come out. Um, really use that to help. Uh, it's a training to help ex expand lower your tantin and expand that belly. Yeah, and let it collapse. You do it. Okay, so... From there, we're starting to warm up our lower body, although we're still finishing up the punch. Um, and then the next one, we're going to warm up our, our, our hip and pelvic and waist area. So you're just going to squat down. The important thing is to keep your hands on your knees. Okay, This will limit your range of motion. Okay, So if you just watch first, I'm going to shift to one side. I don't want to go over. And I'm just going to go down. And I'm going to look at my toe, and then I'm going to circle to my right side. I'm going to look at my toe. I'm going to turn my head and look at my heel, whether I can see it or not. And then I'm going to round and pretend that I'm looking over my back to my other heel, and then come back to center and stand. Okay? So I'm going to do the right side. You can see what it looks like from this uh, little bit angle view. It's a shift. Again, how much you bend, right? You determine by your comfort level. But as long as you keep your hands on your knees, then you can't over overextend. Okay. Um, if you can't go low, yeah. If you can't go low, right, you can put your hands up higher. Right. You don't have to be this far down. You can put your hands up higher, and that's fine. And just just do a little bit, but keep your hands in the same place. All right? So if you're on the chair, it's the same thing. Okay? Yeah, just relax. Let your head drop. Let your head drop. Relax. Yeah? Look behind you. Look behind you to the other heel, and then back to center, and then start again. Okay? Um, I'll turn a little bit angle, see if that... I don't know if that's going to confuse you or help you, but... <laughs> All right, so we'll, we'll just start. You can take a breath if you want first, but we'll just start. And this one, you just breathe normally. Yeah. Just breathe. So I'm going to start on left, look from toe, look behind at my heel, over the back of my shoulders, through my back at my other heel, and then back to center, and then shift to my right. Go from toe to heel, look behind me, other heel, and then center, and then just repeat the sequence. And just breathe normally. Remember, do what's comfortable, do what's safe. Feel yourself sinking into your tantin. And come back to center. 
and stand. Okay. Anybody counting? <laughs> I always forget one. So let's see. So we did, uh, so this is number one, number right? Yeah, number five. This is number two, number three, uh, number four, uh, number five. Yeah, this is number six. Okay, so seven and eight. Okay, so I think we, I think. yeah, so that's the major ones. Okay, and I'll, I'll probably I'll probably find out what I missed later. So as we start ending, we're going to we're going to squat all the way down. But again, as you can squat, stay in the chair. You're the chair example. Come more to the center, please. Yeah, come more to the center. Yeah, yeah. And you you we've we've done a similar one like this, and other people do this qigong. The hands start on the kidneys. And they're going to trace all the way back. And if you can, you trace your fingertips around your feet. And then they're going to come inside. And they're going to come up to the top. And the fingertips are kind of on that 45. And they come up to center. They come up. And then they split. Go under the arms. And back down to the kidneys. And we do this cycle. Again, so um, if you look at it, it's tracing, it's tracing uh, really all the meridians, it's cutting all the belt channels. As the fingers come up and down, it's emphasizing kidney. So a lot of kidney, um, this kidney points here, the kidney comes up, the kidney and liver come up on the inside, and they come up here, the kidney flow breaks off to the kidney, the, uh, I'm sorry, the liver flow breaks off to the, to the liver. The kidney flow comes up right under the collarbone, right about here. So those two, um, those two organ channels are emphasized, but really if you look at your palms, you're, you're doing your whole body. So we're trying to make sure that all the, all the meridians are open. As we go up and down, uh, we're pumping the chi up and down. But again, only do what's comfortable. If you cannot squat, right? If it's not, not cannot, but if it's not comfortable to squat all the way down, you still project and imagine with, with your mind that your hands are going all the way down to your heels, all the way around the soles of your feet. Okay? So don't, don't neglect um, the intent, the E. Okay? So I'll, um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll go a little bit more sideways for you. Okay, so again, take that nice breath. Relax your shoulders, drop your kidneys down, and when you're ready, just take your time. And again, you try to do maybe six. Coming up. Follow your palms, follow your fingertips. Where's the center of your palms tracing your body? Breathe normally. Take your time, relax your shoulder, especially when you come up. When you come up to your collarbone, avoid hunching and lifting your shoulders. Learn to drop your elbows. Okay, do one more, or I'm going to do one more. Yeah, and we just finish right on the kidneys. So just rest, drop your shoulders, relax your hip, relax your kidneys. Your kidneys are settled, your body gets settled and calm. When you have fear, your kidneys lift up into the lower back. Right? They don't fun function, they get all tight. So, need to relax them. Okay. 
Okay, and then um, only two more. So the next one, we're going to rock back and forth. Um, so your heel is going to lift up. You're going to go from toe to heel like a rocking chair. And the trick is you're folding your body and you, you don't want to lean like this and you don't want to lean back, hyperextend. So from this position, your whole body goes forward. Right? And I lift my ankles. So you notice my height doesn't change and all the angles in my body really don't change. It's just my foot moving up and down and just relax. So just, just watch a few. And I come here. Yeah. So my head is, well, let's put it this way. My head stays in the seam, right? And over here, it just goes back and forth. Yeah. But if I lean my whole body, then I'm going to go forward. Or if I lean, I'm going to go back. So you have to swivel all your joints. Okay. And so just go ahead and start. And you just want to feel the, that you're massaging the bottom of your feet. And just do about six of them. And relax your hip. Let everything swivel. Yeah. It's just kind of that rocking chair. If you relax, you'll be okay. <laughs> if you don't relax, you, you'll fall. <laughs> okay. And the very last one is um, we breathe in. As we breathe in, you lift. So expand. And as you exhale, you, you just let everything go. And there's a little thud that comes down. The whole body shakes and vibrates. The palms, as you as you breathe in, you expand your palms down. So I would breathe in and lift. And there's a little bit of tension, right? Fill everything up and then release. And just let everything go. Right? So it's the same as we always do, right? You're showing that biggest stretch and then let go. You have to let go of everything, just let everything shake. Let all the joints shake, all the tendons, ligaments shake, uh, let all the organs shake, all the joints loose. Yeah? And about six, breathing in and out. Okay, so when you're ready, you breathe in and out. Oh, I might have got in the order mixed up. Maybe I'm sorry. This rocking should have been right after that. Yeah. So just have to reverse the order. Okay. And then that's the eight, eight bouquets of silk that I learned. So bring your feet together. Yeah. Come up and down. Okay, so just kind of shake, shake it out, loose, loosen up your joints. Yeah. Okay, so um, let me show you a little bit. Uh, I haven't done some of these warm-ups in a while. So in the chair, you can do them standing or seated in the chair. You put your knees together. Okay, and just put your hands on your knees and just go back and forth. Yeah, just go back and forth. And just loosen everything up. Right? So from sideways, yeah, that's all it's doing. And you can feel, you can feel everything moving, yeah? Your feet go from side to side. Yeah. And then you can go around in circles. So you can go clockwise and counterclockwise, just a little bit. And do both ways. Yeah. Yeah. And then back and forth. So these are small movements, just back and forth, just to loosen up the knee joints. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, this I like seated. Okay. So one of the major things we need to loosen up is our hip. So um, this right in, right over here, right? There's that valley. So if you... If you pick up your leg, if you bend your knee, 
and your toe is up oh, a little farther back. And you just turn right from here. You can feel that joint right in there moving, yeah? So if you put your hand back here on your glutes, you can feel that where that big joint is. So that ridge in between those muscles going through is are the piriformis muscles. So the leg and the arm are very similar, right? right? They're they're hooked into there. So um, if those piriformis muscles get tight, that means they're pulling your leg and your hip joint together, right? Locking it in. So a lot of times when they say, "Hey, get the golf ball, get the tennis ball." They'll say, lie on it and roll right in there. You're trying to soften up and you're trying to push that apart a little bit. So doing a simple, um, from here where nothing moves, but the leg just goes from side to side and totally relaxing, that's one way. Okay? And that's just to kind of loosen it up. But you want to be able to stretch and, and pull those piriformis muscles apart. So what I found is very actually very effective okay it's just crossing the leg over taking the same side hand and just sliding it you just slide it right where it kind of hooks it just hooks right into right into the joint right and it just rests there and you just take the other hand and then just gently pull so you're trying to gently pull my right? shoulders relax and pull this pull this over. You don't have to pull hard. As soon as you start pulling, you're going to feel this joint start to stretch open. And just hold that for a little while. And the hand against the leg is just relaxed. Leg is relaxed. You notice I'm not twisting my body. So all I'm doing is I'm trying to get that leg to kind of wedge out away from, from the iliac, from the hip bone. Okay, And then I'll switch and I'll do the other side. You watch it right after five minutes after we finish today, the video is going to be awesome. <laughs> it always seems to happen. Okay. So this hand is just relaxed. It just slides, relax. This hand just goes over and it just it just pulls right across. Right? And you can feel that joint opening up a little bit. And these are nice little maintenance daily stretches. You can do at any time. Again, with all this, all the sitting we're doing, right? All the stay at home. We may not mean to be sitting so much, but if you're at home all day and you're not doing other things, that's what you're doing, yeah. Yeah. So that's a nice, simple stretch. You're, you're just trying to take that leg and wedge it out and pull it, pull it away from there. Okay. Um, when you twist, right? So if I hook my leg again and then I put my whole arm across and this is what you see people do and I twist right? I twist my body that's not so much for the piriformis that's for your lower back right? you can feel the difference right? so if, if you're on the armchair you might grab the armchair right, and pull yourself over, over right? you're trying to get that lower back you're still pulling this leg over you still get some of that wedging coming out in your piriformis, but not as much as when you just separate this movement like this and just pull it over. Okay? So just to understand the difference between the two movements. Right? So for the piriformis, right, you're just sitting straight and just kind of wedging that, that leg out. And then you can still do the foam roller, you can still do the tennis balls and all of those things. Okay. All right. Okay, let me, uh, I'll stop the video so we can section this part off.